Hi everybody, welcome to Gumbo TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobby Japan. This is episode 147. Oh my god, 147. 147. You know, it just occurred to me that 150, the big 150, might occur around the time we hit Shizuoka. The Shiz. The Shiz. The Shiz knit. Actually, the talking about Shizuoka. Yeah. Thanks for I just bringing did. it up. Okay. We have some, well, at Shizuoka, a lot of new items are announced. Yeah. Look, most of it is military, mm -hmm. RC. But there are some interesting Hasegawa kits, so make sure you click on one of the banners on uh, yeah. hlj.com uh, just to see what the latest stuff is coming. And we do have the Gundam stuff there, but we've already spoken about that. Yes, like the however, neon we're zone. waiting for the, the, the big zone. surprise. We feel there might be a surprise there. Ooh. So that's kind of what we're going to be flocking to as soon as we get into the building. I want to see the life size. The, not the life size, the, the HG Neo Zeon thing. Yeah. yeah. But I think it should be there, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure yeah. it's going to be there. Well, we're going to stand next to it like this. And yeah. Size comparison. Okay, so Ryan, uh, also talking about this episode, yes. 147, we're not going to be building anything today. No, we will no. be, oh, I'll be transforming. Yes, you will. You've got your YF-19. And talking about transforming, Yeah. Um, sorry, I was saying, as it was pointed out to me, facepalm, I was saying VF-19, yeah. but it's actually the YF-19. Yes. Sorry, I'm a bit dys dyslexic. Y's and V's, you know? Yeah, yeah I apologize okay. to all those who brought that up. Um, okay. I will endeavor not to make that mistake again. All right. But Sid, what are you going to be talking well, about? Well, I'm going to be talking about the Kshatra because we kind of teased everybody on the show last week and uh, we weren't sure at the time if we had one available to open up, but uh, we do. We're going to open it up here, right here in the show, and we're going to put it together and see what it looks like. Boss kit has not massive this guy yet, and it's not a model kit, it's an action figure. Yeah. So we'll do that. Uh, before we get on to all this assembling of non Model yeah, stuff. Assembling. Um, why don't we talk about what just came in? Yes. Okay, let me move There's this been a design. ton of Gundam, yeah? Yeah, there's been a lot of Gundam. Uh, let's start with the, the small guy and work our way up here. Yeah? Okay, so this is the, the SD, the BB. The BB. It's the Sengoku Astray. Now the MG's already been released a month ago, and before that there was the HG. Now it's SD time. BB time. He actually looks kind of cool. Yeah, no, he's cute. I don't mind cute. the Sengoku Astray, actually. Yeah. I think it's one of the better suits from the. From the series. I love that ornate stuff. Fighters. Yeah. Okay, so next up, another Gundam Build Fighters kit, HG. This one's huge. Oh, the crossbone. Everybody loves the yeah. crossbone. Mao. 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 And uh, I do too as well, actually. I think it looks great. I'm a big fan of the, the crossbone in general, but uh, when I saw that they kind of did this with this gimmick here, I thought, thought it looks great. And I want to open up and just show some people some stuff. Like, check out the skull. It is a skull. It's a skull. That is kind of kind of great, actually. And there's one other thing I want to show everybody here. We'll get a close-up, of course, but check out the hands. Oh, he has... He's giving the peace sign. The peace sign. Yeah. It's been in Japan too long. That's right. It's this, like, <laughs> instinctive reaction. You'll see it. Like, if you try to take a picture of someone, especially kids, you'll, you'll be like, hey, just a minute. We all fall. I even comes the hand. Yeah. yeah. I find myself doing this, too, and I don't know why. I was at Disneyland oh, on a camera Sunday, Sunday. Hey. and like everyone just couldn't help themselves. Yeah. Like, Actually, someone raises a camera, that's everyone's That's the perfect hands. place for it. Like you walk around <laughs> Disneyland and all you see is this. It's like the Disneyland salute. Right? It's super cute. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's a conditioned response. <laughs> it's like Pavlov's dogs. Yeah. Okay. Camera. Another HG came out same time as the crossbone. The turn A Gundam. Ooh. This guy's a little bit, uh, how do you say? Abnormal, irregular, yes. not like we're used to seeing in these big bulky Gundams. That's what I'm going to say. He's very curvy. Yeah, he's, yes. uh, he's this, from a uh, different was, era. This was actually, uh, when it was released as an MG, it was MG number 100. They did number 100 as the turn A. And uh, now they're on, what is it, 180 something now? So, you know, it came out quite a while ago. And they finally got around to releasing the HD version of it. And uh, it's looking really good. Yeah. I especially like his, his shield. You see his curved shield. Captain America, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You could paint him like Captain America. Hey, you could. Boom. Actually. Boom. Um, all right. All right, now I had this comment. Let me roll <laughs> Nick. It's the kids' little pieces of paper. Yeah, man. I'm just going to start holding <laughs> these up, man. Nick, he wrote, all of this attention going to the RG Exia. And he's mm -hmm. right, because we were hoping, beyond hope, that we'd have an advanced copy of that. And we didn't, unfortunately. He says, I'm just sitting here waiting for the full armor Gundam destroy mode. Well, here's a full armor Gundam destroy mode. Yeah, mate. It's actually the, the BB. I think he was waiting for the HGUC. That's pretty good for a BB, it though. It is really cool. Like, check, check it out. Yeah, and all the weapons packs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just like the other ones. You're getting, you know, I think the three shields, right? And the, the tanks for the back and everything else. It's a little baby version. Yeah, and I think the, uh, the, the SD. Unicorn is one of the better SDs out there. 
the proportions are really cool. But this is what Mr. Nick wanted to see, my good friend Nick. He wanted to see the destroy mode of the HG. And so I thought, you know what? Let's just open up this box. Now we knew this was coming because there's been the HG Unicorn and the HG Unicorn destroy mode and then the um, HG Unicorn Unicorn mode uh, full armor. So this is the last of the list here. So we'll uh, pull this guy off here. And uh, you can see this is a very significantly big box for a HG kit. And that's because you're getting all these accessories. You know, here's the, the shield that normally comes with the HG Unicorn. But uh, you get these runners. Now check it out. You're going to get the extra shield and of course those huge tanks. And then flip it over and you're getting the weapons like the Gatling guns. And uh, I think this is the, the bazookas here. And you're getting... Wait, hold on a minute. Wait for it. Two sets of those, right? So, I mean, you're going to be building for a while. Just accessories. Just like the Master Raid kit, right? And uh, these little red pieces will go into the extra weapons and whatnot. And then uh, you get a couple of rifles in here as well. So, I mean, we're all familiar with the HG Unicorn now. It's just now you're getting this, like, um, full armor version of it, which just gives you so much more stuff to build, which is uh, it's pretty awesome, but pretty time consuming. All right, there you go. RXO, full armor Unicorn, Unicorn coincides with the release of uh, Gun Unicorn Episode 7, which is, I think, hitting the theaters very soon. I'm seeing the posters up in, like, Ikebukuro and Akihabara when I go down there. Yeah, they actually show it in cinemas in Japan. Yes, they do. You ha if you line up at a specific theater in Shinjuku on opening night, and you're one of the first, I don't know what it is, 200 people, you can get, uh, or buy, I can't remember which one it is, you get a special edition, clear version of the kit or something. So. That's pretty cool. Cool, but I'm not going down to Shinjuku just to watch a Gundam. Well, anime. if oh, you're everybody. into it, yeah. Just... Japan. I mean, overseas you'd never see Gundam in the cinema. Yes, sadly. That? That's true. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. Yes, now. yes. I'm gonna talk about my YF19. Yes. Sorry, I was gonna say VF. YF19. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna transform him into the Jerwalk. Jerwalk. The Gerwalk. Yes. So okay. I'm from South Africa. I don't know how to pronounce it. You can't even speak English correctly. Yeah, we just. But it, um... You know. <laughs> I'd okay. like to see the katakana for this, please. <laughs> anyway, so give me a sec to get set up, and you guys can appreciate yep. my transformation skills. Cool, let me cue up my music just in case. Yeah, get it ready. All right. Okay, look, before I get started on the endeavor, mm -hmm. I forgot to mention. <laughs> lots of decals. Yeah, get ready. Get ready. So, and actually, I'm quite happy. There's quite a lot. So, yep. maybe later on I'll put these babies on, but let's get started. Okay. Okay, so. Show us what you got. Shows what you got. YF19. Now, there's one thing i got to say about this guy is he is solid. Yeah. Like, Sid was watching me put some serious pressure on this guy. Yeah. Because, let's just say... Wouldn't do that with a model kit, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I... Ryan, I'm a bit <laughs> ham-fisted a little sometimes. So, yeah, this, uh, this is a, a very solid piece of plastic, and I, I assume there's some kind of metal frame in here. I got the die-cast joints. Yeah, die-cast joints. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, you just got to separate the wings, pull the legs down, get the arms happening. Okay, standing up. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Okay, let's go home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> get the arms happening. As, as usual, there's the flip-out mechanism on one side. I just got to remember which. Activate. Activate. Yep. Got to get the guy's little hands out. Mm -hmm. Um, sadly, it doesn't look like it comes with the Mickey Mouse hands. Looks like you just get <laughs> what you want here. Um, I've also decided to call the the Jer walk the, the girly walk. walk. The girly walk? Or the, the girly walk. The ger not the gerbil walk? The gerbil walk, girly walk. I think they all work for me. Gear okay, walk. Okay, so we have our arms separated. He still looks really really well balanced. Even though you're still yeah, kind of yeah, it's really, it's really hard for this guy to fall over. I think there's a lot of weight in his mm -hmm. legs. Mm -hmm. um, his hands are done. Uh, you know what, Sid? I think I might almost be there. Yeah. Strangely enough. That's what she said. <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> okay, so there we have it. Yeah. The girly walk mode. Yeah. Now. As you can see, this guy stands very well. Like, yeah. you know, he's solid. He's solid. He's he's like a rock. Yeah. Uh, that's one kind of cool thing I like is uh, 
He has a couple of rockets in the side of his legs. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. Um, next week I will do the battle roid mode. Yeah. And uh, you guys can enjoy that experience with me. Looks good. A very rock solid piece of hardware. Yeah. I hope that wasn't too painful for you guys to watch. Uh, next week I'll be doing the battle roid mode. The batroid. Batroid mode. Yeah, you'll be battling the batroid mode. Yeah. So that's the tough one. Okay. That is the tough one. But I yeah. forgot to mention the ray. Yeah, that's right. We have this one other thing that came in that uh, you're meant to show. So let me pull that guy out and uh, we can take a look in the box. Okay. I really like the box. It's, it's kind of shiny. It's a very shiny, cool yep. box. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think we would, Sid and I were chatting about this earlier, but we were. you probably I've, need to add some kind of gloss to get that like almost Yeah, well, if you look feel. at the box images, it's, it's looking pretty shiny, mm. but uh, uh, when you look at the parts here, what we've got, it's of course not shiny. This is just the plastic. So yeah. if you'll be doing top coats and things like that, some people will be painting it. That's where you're going to be able to get that, that shine. Some, uh, what would that be, a, a base or a Yeah, that's actually the base for the feet. They'll mount on there so that it, it will stand up. That's, that's actually yeah, very it's cool. It's got some pretty skinny legs. It's skinny meant to be legs. amphibious. <laughs> Lots of decals. Nice. And they all kind of look the same, which even makes them more exciting. Or confusing. <laughs> and so it also mentioned that, you know, here we have the crew. Yeah, well, you get, uh, I think, some like soldiers, but you also get uh, Snake and Ocelot somewhere in that pot yeah, group. Somewhere in here. Yeah. Good luck to painting these guys, yeah. actually. Oh, it's just like a 1 100 gun, I mean. Yeah. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, that's all the parts you get, and a manual, and uh... Looks like a fun build, there's quite a yeah. few parts in there, so... And if anyone's actually building it, and you want to post up some photos so we can see it... Yeah. We'd be actually, uh, we'd like to know. Yeah, sure. Uh, so there, we have the Metal Gear Ray. Metal Gear. Pretty cool the new looking. one just came out, eh? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Have you played it? Have you uh, heard yeah, anything I about it? Demo. That was good. Now, Sid, the yeah. big news. Uh, the big news, I guess big in Robot Damashi news, is uh, Shatria, we're going to open it up and uh, we'll put it together here, but we're going to have a Ooh. quick look. Dual lightsabers. <laughs> lightsabers? Hold <laughs> on. Oh, yeah. Oh, plastic <laughs> smell. Look, look. You get a base. Check that out. That is cool. You get a base. Of course, all the sabers, this arm is what you're going to need to mount it on the base so you can make it fly, similar to an action base. The effect parts along the top here, I'm not going to bother with these today, I think. And uh, these are also like little arms you're going to plug in. So, so you can... So when you want the fin funnels to go shoot out, you can do it with the missile pods or whatever, you can do that with these arms. Impressive. So it's I'm pretty awesome. Like you very this. impressive. And then you get this big fella. So uh, this is what I'm going to open up now. All right, here we go. Gonna unveil this guy. Come on, buddy. There he is. And you can smell it. You can smell that. You can smell that new plastic smell. Almost addicting. <laughs> Man, probably shouldn't be doing that. So uh, first off, here is Mr. Katya. I'm just gonna talk about some detail here before we put him together. So as you can see, he stands up all right with his big, huge legs. That'll change a little bit, I'm sure, once we get those fin funnels on. But for now. He's good, and of course you're going to get this kind of articulation here, which is actually fairly good for such sizable legs, arms as well. Uh, you can see that it's got all these details painted in here. Now when you build the Kshatriya as an HG kit, these are all stickers, right? Any HG Unicorn kit comes with these kind of stickers. And uh, the MG kits, well, they'll come with decals, water slide decals, the Shenanju anyway. So, but uh, it's nice to see that you get all that detail kind of added for you, so you're not um, having to like try to do it yourself, especially on a figure that is this expensive, you know, they provide that, that for you. So he's looking, uh, looking pretty sharp here. Now the question is, you know, what's going to happen when we start putting on those huge things that make the Kshatriya, the Kshatriya, and let's find out here. We have four of them, remember? Okay, stand there. So here he is now. There you, <laughs> there you go. It's just about as tall as he is, right? Uh, I'm going to flip this over so you can see the back. You do get the arm. This will move. You can hear that clicking. So it's uh, meant to stay in place at certain interval intervals. It shouldn't sag too much. These will move. These will move. And I believe all these little pods will come out. And that's when you, uh, you start using, for example, these effect parts. Once you get these, you, you can mount the little pods in there. 
but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, it has, of course, this little arm, the little claw that comes out. You, I think you can make, mount the beam saber handles in there as well if you like. So it's uh, pretty sharp. Now, what I'm going to do is fold this back in here and try and connect it. Now, you have this little arm here and this, this moves as well, but you can hear the click again. This is actually a little bit stiffer when it comes to moving. So you know it's, uh, it's meant to hold that weight, but you have to be careful because this is very, very narrow down here. So the last thing I want to do is put too much pressure at the wrong angle and uh, with something breaking. So you get these holes in which you mount this thing. It's a little bit difficult to kind of hold at the right angle with the arm in the way, which is why I put them down this way. Hopefully uh, I will get it in without a problem. And there's one. There's number two. Click, click, click. Already he feels significantly heavier. Yeah. Okay, other side. So far so good. Quickest kit build ever. That's right. I think I'll never build another Gundam again. <laughs> I'm just gonna buy Robot Damashi. Here we go. Last one. Okay. Oh, that's cool. It's meant to come off. Okay. Okay, so when you first see him in the anime, you know, he's, I think he's shooting out of the, uh, the hanger. And he's kind of all folded up like this, which you can, of course, replicate here. There he comes. Now, he's a little heavy, of course. That's why they give you that big base. But uh, he's able to hold his weight not too mm. bad, just like this here. But uh, when we start opening this guy up... Click, click, click. It's a very satisfying sound. There he goes. Now things change a little bit. He is a little bit heavier. I'm still able to stand him up. He does pretty good. But I know that if I start moving these things around, he will probably uh, start to sag in different directions. So I'll, I'll uh, leave him here for now. And uh, we'll talk about what else comes in this. You do get extra hands. So uh, the hands it comes with are just the normal fists. I think you're going to get the hands that can hold the beam savers. Here they are. Get a pair of those. Thumbs in different positions. These things are small. They're going to fall out. So swapping hands isn't too difficult on a Damashi. It's a little bit different structure than the Master Grader HG kits. You have to slide it off the, this little ball joint. You can see the hollow in the bottom there. And then you can just pop him back on. Go slow. And these hands do kind of bend a bit. They're meant to uh, uh, move a little bit in the fingers. Soft plastic. Come on, you. There you go. So I can put the beam saber in there if I want. But for right now, he's giving you the thumbs up. Because <laughs> he's awesome. Pew, pew, pew! You are no match for me! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Fade Funnel, <laughs> Missile Pods. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I think he has more weapons than me, possibly. <laughs> you definitely uh, outsize me, except for these things. But don't worry, these. I these, guess we're totally different scales. Can handle, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to play too much with this guy. I want to kind of put him back in the packaging uh -huh. because he's worth a lot of money and we don't want to leave him lying around. No. So I'll just uh, move him to, to the side here. But let's just say. It's very Kshatriya cool. Kshatriya is awesome, Robot Damashi Kshatriya. The Robot Damashi, they know how to do things right, I think. You're not going to find one that's... I think this is the biggest Damashi they've done so far. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Of course, now people have seen this and they've seen an HG Neo Zeon. So people are going to be like, when's the Robot Damashi Neo Zeon coming out? And you know, Bandai wouldn't surprise me if they do it. Okay, Ryan, we got some questions? Oh, we do have questions. All right. So, <clears throat> put, put a butter up. Okay, first is Calvin Zero. Okay. Hey, Sid and Ryan, nice episode again. I recently got my hand on a PG Wing Gundam Zero Custom. Ooh, nice. I have a plan to give it a minor paint job with the inner frame with gunmetal via dry brushing, red in metallic, red in metallic red, blue in metallic blue, and yellow in gold. But one of the red parts on the stomach area is made out of some rubbery material. So my question for Sid is, yeah. can I use the Tummy Acrylic spray paint on the rubbery part? Do I need to do any preparation before painting? And I spray paint acrylic on a rubber part? Mm, good 
question. <laughs> How thick is it? Yeah. Anytime you take it like a like a a chemical, you know, like paint, and try to put it on rubber, there is a chance that you will get some kind of reaction you don't want. And the plastic we can kind of get away with at times, although certain kinds of plastic uh, you do have problems with when you start using paints. I, I don't know what the correct answer to this question is because I've never actually had to do what he's going to try and do. But if because of that, my inclination is to say maybe double check it before you try because you don't, the last thing you want to do when you're building a model kit is break one important part. Mm -hmm. And then, especially on uh, PG. Yeah, especially PG, especially if it's like that kind of different kind of rubber, you're not going to be able to fix it with just model cement like you normally would. So you have to be even more careful. Well, let's open the question up to everyone who watches. Yeah. If anyone has worked with the rubber parts on the PG, please PG drop wing. Yeah. PG wing. Pre, please drop some. Well, how the guy would handle this in the comments. Yeah, because I haven't built that kit, unfortunately. Okay. No, no, that's cool. I'm aware of it, but. Hmm. Next, yeah. Sean Sean Loke. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I noticed the Gundam brick kits have some of the coolest designs around. Just wondering, what's Sid's favorite? EXS, Full Armor ZZ, Full Armor Unicorn. Yeah, I guess brick he means like they're just massive with Lloyd with stuff. I like the Double Zeta. Uh, the Faz, the Full Armor Double Zeta is cool. It's huge, of course. Mm -hmm. And the XS is as well. I like that one too, but I think I have to go with the Faz as my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from Hobby Link TV. This is from the competition. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just here for the comp. <laughs> yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, that made me laugh, so I stuck it in there. I'm, I'm sure you didn't win, though. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sid's going to announce the winner. Yeah. Next, Black Lotus. Question for Sid and Ryan. Do you have kids? How do you build around them? A lot mm -hmm. of toddlers, lovely girl that takes all parts of my kit. Kits when I'm building, not to mention that I only paint at night, so she won't be exposed to another paint fumes. How do you guys build with kids around? Well, I'll start. Yeah. I don't build now yeah. that my daughter's around because she will grab anything and yeah. break it. And yeah. because I live in a smaller place, I can't really mm -hmm. paint inside. Uh, just, I don't know, how do you do it? So uh, well, is the guy who's done yeah, it. Yeah, I've been through it. Uh, when they're very young, of course, they're gonna be interested in whatever it is you're gonna do. So you either have to try and get away from them because you don't want them grabbing parts and handling tools and stuff like that. They're just too young. So you either have to do it in a separate room or just when they're not around. However, there will come a time where they're kind of able to understand what it is you're doing. And around the time my daughter was that age, I would build stuff with her. So I would buy a, a SD or BB kit with those big parts that just snap together. There's no small things you have to worry about or even cut out of off the runner for the most part. And uh, I would let her just try to match these pieces together and I would help her when I could. And uh, from there, she kind of understood what it was I was doing, but became more interested in other things. So it's, it's at the point where I can I can build with her in the same room and she doesn't pay any attention to me because she understands that, you know, what's it's happening. She's got her own thing she yeah. wants to do. Once they develop their own kind of interests, if it doesn't coincide with yours, you'll have, you'll have a little bit more free time. But <laughs> you just have to suck it up for a couple of years, maybe. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, next, Kelvin, 7-Eleven. It's a store and more. Ding mm. dong. Yep. He said, could you sum up all the 7-Eleven kids till date? Okay, yeah, there's a lot of comments about 7-Eleven, so yeah. I feel like a few of them in here. 7-Eleven um, in, in Japan is a little bit different, of course, because they do all these tie-in and promotions, which are quite a bit different from uh, what I experienced in North America anyway. But they did do, of course, they did the ARC 782, which I've shown. They've done like three different versions of that. They did Zaku and a Bear Guy. They did a Strike Freedom, a Z-Gok, a Hainu. Not a Hainu, a Nu. Yeah, they've done... Uh, Whatever they can get their hands on, for the most part. All they do is they take the model kit and mold it in green, and orange. Well, they had those fantastic 7 Eleven fizzy drinks. Yes. They were really good. Okay. And then they took them away. Sorry, yeah. I know that's off topic, but. Yeah. Oh, that's probably one of the next questions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so the 7 Elevens in Japan, do they sell Slurpees or do they call it something else? Uh, this was my biggest disappointment the first time I was in Japan. Yeah. Because I, when I first time I came, I was like a tourist. I was here for like two weeks to try and train in these dojo. and. I, I, everything was like so mind-blowingly different to what I expected that I was, I felt so like out of place. But the one thing I saw, which kind of like kept me rooted, so to speak, was that 7-Eleven colors and that sign. I'm like, okay, 7-Eleven, I understand the world again. So I'm <laughs> going to go in there and I'm going to buy a Slurpee. And I walked into the 7-Eleven, no Slurpee machines. No, they don't have Slurpee, No, do no they? big gulps. Uh, 
and I kind of wandered around to the counter where I expected there might be a, you know, a drink machine. And what did they have? They had Odin. Do you know, for those people who don't know, Odin is basically like, I don't know, fermented food. <laughs> they basically like stick egg or daikon or something yeah, in, in yeah, this, yeah. Uh, like this oil and just kind of let it sit for, a while. <laughs> for far longer than yeah. you think it's safe. But then where have I seen Slurpees though? Was it KFC that has a Slurpee machine? They have now? some kind of thing. I can't remember what they call it now. Yeah. I was actually commenting to one of my friends once, like bemoaning the fact that there's no Slurpees in Japan and there's a 7-Eleven on every corner. Like, no, literally there is. But uh, somebody said to me, oh, there's one in Kita Senju. <laughs> so I'm going to have to make my way to Kita Senju and see if I can find a Slurpee I'm not a big machine. Slurpee guy, so I Huge never Slurpee noticed. Guy. I love it. <laughs> so when I go back to Canada, it's the first thing I do is go to 7-Eleven. <laughs> uh, Edward Mass. Yes. Over the heavens, it's 7-Eleven. Gundam. Yeah. So do you have the high new 7-Eleven version 2? Uh, no, I don't. Somebody had asked him one of these questions like, uh, in Japan, where can you get them? And you would think that because they're at all 7-Elevens, you just go to 7-Eleven. Well, that's not true. Like for these 7-Eleven colors, you have to go to a specific 7-Eleven. And there's one in Akihabara, and there's one in Odaiba where that big one, one gun yeah. is. And that's it. I, you can, if you're... There on the very first day when they release, you might get one in a, a different 7-Eleven, but then Bandai, for some reason or whatever, only distributes those two. So I suggest people, a lot of people are coming to visit Japan as tourists, go to Akihabara because you have to go to Akihabara, but go to the 7-Eleven on the corner by Yorobashi Camera. And if you're going to Odaiba to see the 1-1 one -one Gundam, go to the 7-Eleven in that building as well on the first floor. Those are probably the only places you might still have a chance if you're coming as a tourist. I really missed the Final Fantasy drink. It was one of the best <sighs> fizzy drinks I ever had. I, I still have some. Yeah, I kept it's, them. It's old though. It's like yes. Five years it was old, an energy yeah. drink. Final Fantasy energy yeah. drink in a can. And I was collecting all the cans because they had all the character arts. Yeah. I might still have those. And I might find them because I'm moving. Pop one open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. pretty old. <laughs> so just to everyone, you know, we have YouTube, we have Hobbylink TV. And we we have, have two kits we got to give away, which Ryan jump in the gun. Oh. Right here. Don't worry, I got your back. Okay, so what are we giving away on this episode? That's nah, okay. As mentioned, the 7 Eleven Gundam. And somebody asked, does it have the does it have the sign? Oh it does. It does. Go go 7 Eleven. So you're gonna get that. Oh. I actually have one more of these things kicking around here somewhere too, so one day I'll give that one out. And you're getting Scott's Valkyrie. Please keep in mind with this Valkyrie. You are basically going to have to build it again. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we took it apart when we were trying to yeah, transform so, it. Yeah, so, like, well, all the pieces are in there. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. We hope. And, yeah, you got, you got mm. some work cut out for you. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People who hey. watch the show know what they're doing, I would think. Yeah. Okay, so, we had 440 comments. <laughs> and my good friend, Mr. Random Number Generator, <laughs> said com. that uh, we should check out number 158. So, 158, Mr. Firebeanie. This is what he says. He says, great episode, guys. Can't wait to see the YF-19 transform next week. I hope it was what you expected there, Fire Beanie. <laughs> it's so awesome looking. And yeah, I yeah, no, it, it is awesome. awesome looking. So Fire Beanie, I will be contacting you within the next couple days. Um, if you watch this episode and you find out you're the winner and you're like, yeah, I'm the winner, don't email me. <laughs> I will contact you within two days. Yeah, we will contact you. What, do what not I do, spam our addresses. What I do is... Uh, I leave enough time to be sure that the person who was chosen as winner is able to learn about that by watching the video. Yeah. Because if I sent the email right away, before the video even goes up, he's getting an email saying he won. And then that kind of defeats the purpose of you know, doing this little announcement. I think it's kind of fun. So uh, Fire Beanie, I'll be contacting you in a couple of days, all right? Patience and then, is uh, a virtue. You just have to give me your mailing address and these things are on their way to you. Okay, Lucky so man. what's the next? Next set here, we're doing, doing some mix match actually. Ooh. We're doing the, the Reborn Gundam, Reborn Gundam from uh, Double O. This is actually a really cool suit, and uh, he's pretty much all built. Yeah, he's in to, good uh, condition. Oh yeah, he is. I was going to do some modding to this guy. I never got around to it. And uh, it's actually one of the better HD sit kits from Double O. And we got a Valve Rave. We did the Valve Rave on the show. A not Valve too long Rave. Ago. That's yeah. a nice. That's actually yeah. that's a really nice. Yeah. And uh, because we only kind of do the straight builds. Um, I, well, there's some stickers on there, but I think I left a lot of stickers off, so you'll be able to do with that as you please as yeah, well. The so, pleasure of stickering. There you go. So we got a Valve Rave, the Hito, yeah, Hito or whatever it is. And uh, we know there's a lot of Valve Rave fans out there, so yes. I'm sure we'll get a ton of... Con, no, just a reminder, Hobbylink TV, Hobby episode... Hobbylink.tv, episode 146... 6... 7. 147, 147. 147. 
Leave a comment. Leave a comment on I just came Hobby to Lane TV, oh. not on YouTube. I, I have to say that uh, I am enjoying the, seeing these comments on Hobby TV because I get an email notification every time one goes up. And so when I come into work the next day, there's this, this string of emails now uh, notifying me of comments. I'll read all the comments. And uh, you guys out there are funny. Like first thing in the morning, I'm laughing because of these comments. It makes my work so day needs a lot better. Laugh. Yeah, well, I'm moving. <laughs> Don't get me started. Uh, talking about social media, yeah. I'm trying not to jump the gun. Yeah. Got anything else to say? Uh, not on social media, no way. Okay. okay. Facebook. Yeah. We have Facebooks, mm -hmm. YouTubes, Hobbylink TVs. Yeah. Join us, friend us, like us, comment. Yeah. Uh, you can still comment on YouTube. Of course. Um, we love it. I get all the YouTube stuff. Yeah. Uh, great discussions going on there sometimes. Yeah. Informative. <laughs> Ignore the <laughs> No, so that's okay. all I need to say. Okay, big big news for me, I guess, is uh, next week, Thursday, we should have the RGXE in our hands. Next Saturday is the official release date, which means we'll have it a day or two early. So as soon as we get it, like we're sticking the camera in front of it, and we are going to show as much as we can and get a video up as quickly as we can. Because mm -hmm. I know, judging by all the comments in the last couple of episodes, people are eagerly awaiting this kit. Oh yeah. So don't worry, we're gonna get up as fast as we can for you guys. So until then. Just hang tight. We'll see you later. See ya.